Greetings, YouTube, family, friends, and survivors. Well, they're saying that uh, winter's coming back in tonight and going to snow down to 4,000 feet, turn cold until June 1st, but then kind of rainy on and off and cool until July 1st. That's being a normal year. That's what it used to do here, and uh, that's a good thing. And it's a lot nicer when you're growing your broccoli to have the cooler weather. So rather than doing a garden update right now, I am going to talk about the solar and a change that I made today. I just love that blue sky. Yeah, okay. I had uh, some fused disconnects protecting the solar panels. And I did this because I originally put in a backup system for as little money as I could. And these uh, fused disconnects, they have a shunt type that you pull out, dis disconnects the power. These have 30 amp AC fuses in them. And you're not supposed to use AC fuses in a DC system. For me, they did provide some protection. They provided short circuit protection, but um, I have no idea what the actual amperage is. It says 30 amps, that's AC. I have no idea how many amps it would take before it blew with DC. And then there seems to be an issue where there can be, it, it re-welds or something like that and connects the circuit again. Whatever the case is, these fuses were getting hot. Uh, they weren't blowing, but they were getting hot, very warm to the touch. And in my book, uh, heat could be electricity. If I'm making heat, something's wrong. I'd rather turn that heat into electricity stored in my batteries. What the percentage was I was losing, I don't know, but I was leaving the covers open on these things to keep them from getting too hot. It tells you kind of how hot they were getting. The problem with just switching to a DC fuse that particular fuse size uh, is not a common DC fuse. You can get them. They're very expensive. I priced them out. And to get one that's sized DC, sized for that size fuse, was like $30 a piece. One reason not to try to use AC equipment on DC. However, what I do know about Square D in the QO series, they are rated, I believe, DC to 48 volts. So you can use them uh, 48, 24, 36, all the way down to 12 volts. And it's the QO series, not the Square D home brand. Square D home brand is not the same animal. You want the QO if you're gonna use uh, it in a DC configuration. So I have had been using this for quite a while with no problems. This 30 amp is the gas generator, 24 volt generator. And this is the solar array coming from the charge controller, a 60 amp right here. And it's the QO series and it's been running fine and not getting warm at all. So I went to Lowe's and I happened to be in the big city and I found this load center and it's a 100 amp load center and it was only $23.95 and the breakers were a little less than $7 a piece. So that really made sense. It was the least expensive way to do it and still have a quality DC breaker. If you're trying to get a 30 amp DC breaker from one of these solar companies, it's really good stuff, but it's just, I don't have that kind of money. And then the sub panels that they sell, I don't have money for that either. I've seen some of them go for a hundred bucks and 25 to 45 dollars a breaker, depending on where you go. And I just didn't have that kind of money, but I could do this, $23.95 for, for the load center, and then the breakers were $6.95 a piece. And that's real doable, and they're rated for DC. So by doing it the way I did, all of these are on one bus. 
And so now I can add three more breakers on the other bus and carry another circuit over to this other um, charge controller when I add solar. And I'll move this over and give them a little more airspace. It's just sitting there for storage right now. This one's not connected. So when I add solar, uh, I'll protect the solar panels with, by adding breakers here. And this charge controller will get its lead from this one. There's a data cable on the back of this meter. I'll pull the cover and there's a data cable and run it over and plug it into the processor on this one. And then this will just match whatever this one's doing. So it's like one big charge controller. And that seemed to be the least expensive way to, to fix the problem. So now I'm not getting hot and I should be translating that heat that was being generated from having the wrong fuses into electricity. So I should see some change. Uh, there should be a measurable change. Whether I have the equipment to be able to tell you exactly how much it's going to be, I don't know. The best thing to do is just start out with a DC rated breaker and don't use those fuse, AC fuse disconnects. That's, that's not the right way to go. All right, I hope this helps somebody. Have a really blessed day.